Hi, going, my son, and welcome back to Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. It's the Statman run. Now, I actually, while doing my outro in the previous episode, I kind of shafted myself because I forgot that I was going to upgrade. I'm probably going to stick to upgrading the sword, though. Spear is nice, but um, don't really need it. Also, take this off my bar. Sorry, Solera, but I am not going to jolly cooperate on this run. This is Andre of Astora. Well, you must be a new arrival. I'm Andre of Astora. If you require something, then speak to me. And he will also give you a gesture. Hurrah! Which is awesome. Uh, reinforced weapon. Requires one Titanite and 200 souls. Well, that's all I can afford. <laughs> huh, it requires more to upgrade the Claymore. It requires less to upgrade the straight sword hilt. But why would you do that? Go get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. Um... Is there some kind of, like, inherent quality in my character versus other, like, enemy hollows that makes it so that even though I am, in fact, you know, beef jerky man, um, they don't see me as that? Like, is it the fact that I'm opening up to them in a conversation, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. But in any event, we're up, we're at the first boss. Well, okay, second boss, technically. First boss that you have to kill. Because you can technically skip Taurus Demon if you have... If you do a workaround. Or if you have the Master Key, or if... You know, there's a couple ways to get to this boss, which you have to kill, in order to progress the plot, that don't involve going through Taurus Demon. But Taurus Demon is like the intended path. Oh shit, I didn't realize he was in, had a bead on me there. <laughs> Not realize he was that close to me. Okay. Oh, hello. Forgot this big guy's here. Thankfully, these guys don't respawn, except for, like, one of them in a specific area later in the game that respawns. So you only gotta kill this guy once. Or, I mean, you don't have to kill him. You can bypass him and just grab the item he's guarding. But, I mean, where's the fun in that? Because getting smashed by a giant mace is fun. Yeah, get out of the stairs, you freaking weirdo. Get over here. I don't know if you can backstab this guy, but I know you can parry him. Yes! Does not have a repost animation, though. Shit. <laughs> oh, fuck! forgot he does that big angry double swing. Yeah, this is the epitome of big guy that just wants to smash you flat. And it does a fairly good job of it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and it also would probably be better if I didn't use a slashing weapon against all that armor. But, I mean, hey. Go with what you got. Oh, fuck. Big shield. Hey, hey, hey! Knock that off, you. Yeah, a lot of enemies have healing in this. Which is kind of annoying. Oh god, ow. Got him! That could have gone south if I hadn't killed him in that very swing. Hey, another shard. Cool. Uh, I don't know if that's enough to get another upgrade, because I need two for the next level, and it costs 800 to get one. Only... might be enough, actually. I'll go check. I will go check. But first, Firekeeper Soul. It's called the Firekeeper Soul, but it's actually more like a very big humanity. Soul of a long-lost Firekeeper. Each Firekeeper is a corporeal manifestation of her bonfire, and a draw for the humanity which is offered to her. Her soul is gnawed by infinite humanity, and can boost the power of precious essence flasks. 
It can be used to gain humanity and restore HP at the cost of losing the Firekeeper soul to reinforce Estus flasks. Because you can use it as a Firekeeper, as a soul, or as a uh, humanity, I should say, and get five humanity points in addition to a full heal. But, as the game points out, it's a lot better to use it at first for making your Estus flask heal for more. Which I will do in a bit, but I am going to first upgrade my weapon. At least I hope I can. We'll see if I can or not in a second. Hello again. Well, hello again. You seem to be doing all right. Need anything forged? Oh, I do have enough. Oh, it's only one for this. I'm thinking Dark Souls 2, don't mind me. I've got I'm getting like math mixed up in my head here. Okay, now I need two to get to the third level. Okay. Go get yourself neither. So I need another... Let's see, I need 200 points to do the upgrade itself, and I need another 1,600 for the shards. So I need 1,800 souls. So I need another 900-ish souls. That's actually not bad. I can think of needing more in many situations. Like the 1.7 billion I'm going to need to fully level this character. <laughs> Still can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to do it, though. Just you wait and see. I'm going to do it. Oh, I also got a uh, point of humanity from killing the big guy, I guess. Good times. Try fall. Yeah, nice try. Beware of open area. Yeah, that's a pretty good tip. Gonna... There is a slight stealth mechanic in this game. Not much. But basically, if you don't aggro somebody, you can do something like this. Wow. Surprised he survived that. Probably on like one hit point or something. No. Oh, psych. Baited you out. Get stabbed in the abdominals. Your oddly many-toned abdominals. Like, seriously, man. Is being a hollow, like, the secret to being swole? Maybe. <laughs> Damn ragdoll body. Miscreant. <laughs> Need stealth. Yeah. Oh, message left. Yeah, I think you were right. Clever closing the door on me earlier, were you? Didn't think I'd go all the way around and kick your ass. Ooh. And get a redundant duplicate longsword. I mean, I say redundant, but I could upgrade it a different way than I'm upgrading this one, even though at first the upgrades are all just, uh, you know, linear increase to damage. But once you hit, uh, I believe it's plus five? Yeah. Once you hit plus five, you can actually start making the weapons fire damage or lightning damage and stuff, so having another one wouldn't be too bad. Can I use the halberd? Can I use the halberd? I don't think I can. Nope. Requires 16 strength. I can two-hand it, but I cannot one-hand it. Which means I can't use my shield with it, which means no bueno. Because ideally in Dark Souls, any weapon you any weapon you want to use should be used with one hand. I mean you can dual you can two-hand it for the sake of damage in instances where it's um, you know, beneficial, like a boss's vulnerable period when you can want to deal as much damage as possible but although this is not true with elemental weapons hmm. uh but with um but ideally you want to have enough stats to use the weapon one-handed for like day-to-day -day use slash so that you're not doing a, like a sissy slap kind of like that but you know even when you're hitting an actual target um also, welcome back to Firelink, by the way. Um, oh, God, what was I saying? Right. But ideally, you want to be able to use a weapon one-handed so that you're never caught with a situation where you can't... If you don't have a chance to do this to two-hand your weapon, you can still do damage with it. Now, as I noted, that two-handing doesn't make you do more damage if the weapon doesn't scale off strength at all. This is rare, that a weapon doesn't scale off, scale off strength at all, like, period. But, um, there are a couple examples. There are a couple examples. 
Plus, the movesets on weapons are different, and a lot of the times a moveset on a two-handed weapon, two-handing a weapon is a lot um, funkier than using it one-handed. No response. She cannot speak. Can you do a thing? Yay! That's just flash plus one. So now it heals more health. Probably still not even half of my <laughs> excessively large life bar, but I mean, hey, every bit helps. This is, uh, this is something you definitely learn in this game. Because, I mean, if you watch the speedrunners and the, like... Like, uh, yeah, I guess speedrunners is the biggest thing. You watch this game, you might get the false impression that this game is easy. They make it look easy because they've been playing this game for God only knows how long. The guy I've been watching a lot of lately, uh, Lobos Jr. is his name. Go check him out. You know, not like he needs the help from little people like me. But, um, I mean, hey, I'll be nice. But, uh, he has, like, 10,000 hours on Dark Souls 1 alone. Let alone the time he's also spent on 2 and 3. And Bloodborne. So, yeah. The man, the man has put in the hours. I think after I get the next upgrade, I'll go up and fight the next, the first plot boss. Is that enough? Nope. I need... What is it? I needed 1,800? Yes, because 800 to buy a thing. Oh, no. No, I need 1,600 to buy two things, and then 200 to... Do the upgrade itself. So I need to kill 20 points worth of dude. Pretty sure this guy's worth more than enough. Oh yeah, he's done he's living on a sliver off of that backstab, so. Probably Oh hey. Leggings. Okay. We'll just hike our way over to the blacksmith, get the sword forged up, and then make our way to Gargoyles, the first boss. Yeah, not much more to say than that, really. <laughs> Now, I gotta admit, Warrior is not one of my favorite starts because, well, I just like the magic. Even if even if magic is kind of meant to be like a secondary thing in this game, I like primary using it because it's fun. Um, admittedly, in Dark Souls 2, it's kind of better, but um, still pretty good in this one. Um, well, I don't know, okay. I'm not the biggest fan of anything. the Warrior start because his armor is kind of heavy, but it has no poise. Except the helmet, which only has a little bit of it. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so what do I need? I need two. Two, please. Yeah. Go get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. All right, we've got ourselves to level three weapon. It's pretty good. And the main source of us getting improved damage, because we're not going to level anything that increases damage until, what, new game plus three? Yeah, because we're on new game zero. We're on, like, new game. We're leveling vitality. New game plus one, we level attunement. New game plus three, we level endurance, which is going to be so sweet. And then new game, yeah, new game plus three, we'll finally get to level strength. Yikes. It's going to be a while. I mean, we're going to be really reliant on... Elemental weapons, like I said, because they don't scale off anything. They just get better as you upgrade them, and they kind of cap out. But, I mean, that cap out is still really good. I mean, I could get a Chaos weapon. That's one of the ones that scales off of your Humanity stat. That I mentioned earlier. Or previous episode, possibly. I'm doing this in one recording, if you can't tell, so... To me, it's all just one blur of time. Oh, fuck. 
I don't like fighting these guys. Hey, hey! None of that. Cheeky bastard. Oh yeah, I forgot. The guy dropped the pants. Ugh, 6.4. Can I wear it without fat rolling? Sweet! Um, I don't exactly have the legs for it, though. <laughs> Look at my spinning little bacon legs. Uh. But more poise, though. Poise is good. Whoa. Also, if you're wondering why the bell is ringing, uh, it's a minor online feature where if... Because the objective here is to ring the bell. If another person in another world, you know, another game, close to you does the ring, uh, does ring the bell, you hear it. Neat little... Oh, fuck! Wrong... <laughs> rolled the wrong way. Um, it's a neat little feature. Ow. Fucker. Ow. Oh, God. Ow. Fucker. Yeah, that, that dude with the spells, he's called a Chandler. He buffs enemies by doing a stupid little dance. That, yeah, he already did it off... Oh, God. He already did it when he saw me downstairs, because there's like a... Ow. There's like an open section. And so it even makes these noodly armed caveman hollows do a lot of damage. And the room is full of them. Ow. The fuck he has poise? He has poise in a loincloth? What the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. I guess the I guess the buff gives them poise. That I never experienced that before. Well, I'm confused. I guess because I've always I'm used to one shotting them, they don't get a chance to benefit from the poise. Hey, hey, get back here! Oh yeah, he was starting to do the stupid dance, but wasn't having none of that. But yeah, he saw me from downstairs from up here. I'm gonna push him down. Yeah. Down you go. Ah, <laughs> oh, ragdoll physics. Never change. Never change. Is there something in one of the barrels? No? Okay, just this guy. Soul. Try fleeing. Why? Everything's dead. Yeah. Fuck you, furniture. Ah, oh, I hate fighting these things. Ah. No! Stored parry. Because it's like I was blocking, I put in a parry and put in the game's like, okay, I'll make you parry the next time. You have an action available. And then I'm like, no, that's not what I want to do. But the game's like, what? Nope, sorry, I made you do it. And then the guy stabs me. And then I lose health and I'm sad. But I'm okay. Rah! Out of the way. Oh, wait, do I have your key? Yes, I do. But first I'm going to go grab the thing over here. First I'm going to grab the thing over here. Whoops. Oh, well. Kind of needed to do that anyway. I don't know why I'm hitting the wrong buttons for attacks. I've been playing too many games with keyboard and mouse. So I'm not used to playing with a controller. Or I'm not used to playing Dark Souls, I should say. Because it's got a pretty unique uh, freaking control scheme. Although, when I used to co-op with Knack in uh, number two, he pointed out how the control scheme feels like you should have an N64 controller. And I would love to have a USB X6 N64 controller to play Dark Souls. I think it would fit perfectly. Although, I think you're short of buttons. You oh, you have the A, B... What is it? On an N64 controller, you have the left and right bumper, you have the Z trigger, the stick, the D-pad, A, B, and then the four C buttons. I think you could do it. You're missing a stick, though, is the thing. Hmm. I mean, the Lobos Jr., the guy I mentioned before, um has played Dark Souls 1 with a SNES USB controller, and that has even less buttons. Thank you. But I'm thinking of, like, legitimately having enough functionality. I am Knight Lautrec of Karim. Okay. I appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. Okay. See you later, dude. He's not nice. You get to kill him later. I mean, I could kill him right there if I wanted to, but... Nah. We'll play out his plot. 
for the first run through. Future run throughs will uh, meta game our knowledge of his actions in the previous timeline and you know catch him on him before he does them, that sort of thing. And you know, despite the fact that I'm at the boss and ready to fight him, I'm going to cut the episode here. I'm going to be a little tease. Because I kind of want to start the episode with a boss fight in the next episode, and I think I like that. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, Twitter, Tumblr, and subscription are in the description as usual. Please, when subscribing, click on the bell. As when you click on the bell, it'll make my uploads a priority in your feed, rather than just whatever is the most popular thing. Do engage in all three of the above-mentioned activities. But anyway, Dark Souls, Prepare to Die Edition, Statman. Doing pretty good so far. I've got one-fourth of the vitality needed to max it out, because you max out at basically 100. Level 18, we've got a plus three weapon. We've got some armor upgrades. We have some poise, which is amazing, because poise actually works in Dark Souls 1. Don't even get me started about what they did in the other games. Ugh. Ugh. It's, it's, it's terrible. I'm getting bile just thinking about it. But anyway, but that's another that's another game for another time. But for, but anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And ciao for now. Out of my shot. <laughs> Stupid random spoopy ghost.